there are tissues that uh, would prefer other uh, fuel molecule rather than glucose. Okay. All right, so the brain, for example, the requirement is quite substantial. So although your brain can utilize ketone as a source of uh, energy, but it's only 20% of the total uh, energy that it requires. Our heart muscles, as you have heard from Dr. Ryan, the uh, glycolytic, glycolytic pathway in the heart muscle is quite low. Uh, quite low and has a poor survival under conditions of ischemia. Okay. And there are diseases as a result of deficiency of enzymes of the glycolytic pathway. Uh, one is hemolytic anemia, which is a deficiency of one of the enzyme pyruvate kinase. Fatigue uh, could also be due to deficient phosphofructokinase in the skeletal muscles. Okay. All right. Still on biomedical importance, cancer cells are fast growing cells. We know that. And requires large amount of energy. Those glycolysis is uh, utilized by cancer cells. And so they uh, form a large amount of pyruvate, which is reduced to lactate and is exported. Now, when pyruvate, which is the product of glycolysis, is converted to lactic acid, it means that that type of glycolysis does not require oxygen. So it is anaerobic glycolysis. So cancer cells can grow very well in anaerobic conditions. Anaerobic conditions. So that cancer cells can proliferate very, very fast if aeration of cells is deficient. So that means that the lungs are not uh, doing well, are not uh, functioning well. And we know certain lifestyles can make the lung inefficient. Like for example, smoking. Okay. So consequence of smoking, okay, the lung could not, the lungs could not uh, uh, fully aerate the whole body. So cancer cells can thrive very well. So because cancer cells likes to be in an aerobic condition. And because it produces lactate, out of the pyruvate, the environment becomes also acidic, acidic. So two requirements for cancer cells to grow very well, lack of oxygen and acidic tissues. So there you are. So your adjunct uh, procedures that to help in the treatment of cancer is to aerate the patient. So oxygenate the patient and make the tissues alkaline. So it should be in an alkaline environment so that cancer cells cannot grow well. All right. 
although the lactic acid that is produced can be utilized for formation of glucose through a process known as gluconeogenesis in the liver. And this is an energy expensive process, which is responsible for much of the hypermetabolism. Hypermetabolism meaning increased utilization of glucose in cancer patients. And we have this what we call cancer casixia. Huh? You know, because cancer cells uh, utilizes an aerobic uh, situation. And it is a very expensive way of producing ATP or uh, energy. Because for every molecule of glucose, there will be less amount of ATP will be formed. For every molecule of glucose in an anaerobic condition through glycolysis, you will only produce two molecules of ATP per glucose molecule. So it's quite expensive. So that's why cancer cells thrives very well in high sugar, no? high sugar condition. All right. So you think of diabetes mellitus. So patient with diabetes mellitus would be a very good place for cancers to grow because there's plenty of sugar. No? All right. So lactic acidosis results from various causes, including impaired activity of pyruvate dehydrogenase, especially in thiamine or B1, vitamin B1 deficiency. Because this thiamine is converted to a tocoenzyme, thiamine uh, pyrophosphate, and it is incorporated in the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. This enzyme is a complex, meaning to say it is not only one um, enzyme, it is made up of several. So it's a complex. Okay. <clears throat> All right, what we have here is a summary of glycolysis. Uh, okay. Uh, initial reaction is to convert your glucose into hexose phosphates. You can also get glucose from glycogen. Breakdown of glycogen will produce glucose converted to hexose phosphates. This glucose can be from dietary source and converted to hexose phosphates. And then this is phosphorylated. This is phosphorylated uh, it's, it's, it's this. Exos from phosphate chance, our exos, exos phosphates. Uh, it is a split in the middle, and you have two triosphosphates. Yes. One is glyceraldehyde, the other one is dihydroxyacetone phosphate. This can be converted to glyceraldehyde. Yeah. And then it goes through a series of reactions that goes down to pyruvate formation. Okay. Now, 
in this area here, there is oxidation of your glycerol dehydrate phosphate. It is oxidized and you have NAD as the acceptor of your hydrogen and it becomes now NADH plus H and you know that in aerobic glycolysis this goes to the electron transport chain so, removal of hydrogen combined with oxygen to form water but at the same time it forms ATP you know you're already your electron transport chain okay all right However, in anaerobic condition, this NADH will not go into the electron transport chain. It will not go there. That NADH will be oxidized back to NAD by giving the hydrogen to the end product pyruvate to become lactate. So you recover this NAD oxidized already so it can have another reaction. Okay. So the NADH does not go into electron transport chain. So that's why there is less ATP that will be formed. Okay. So this one is black during anaerobic conditions. This one is black during anaerobic conditions. No? Because this one, the spirovate will go to the mitochondrion to become acetyl-CoA and that acetyl-CoA will go into your rib cycle. You see? All right. Okay, so there you are. Those are your ATP formation and the catabolism of your glucose. Okay, these are the enzymes involved. Oh. And you have your NIT of seven. And then the acetyl-CoA that goes into the citric acid cycle, it goes through your citric acid cycle. You will have a NIT of 25. You add these two together, 25 and seven, you have total of 32. If you include this, this is aerobic. Huh? All right. While it is anaerobic, you only have two. Okay? You only have two per molecule of glucose. But with Aerobic glycolysis, you will have 32. Okay? All right. <clears throat> now, before we go into the reactions of the glycolytic pathway, let's uh, try to uh, go back again. So, the initial reactions starting from glucose it is phosphorylated either by hexokinase, which you know, it is a lever enzyme. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, a tissue enzyme, extrahepatic tissue enzyme, while glucokinase is your lever enzyme. So again, hexokinase and glucokinase. Okay, so you will produce glucose 6-phosphate. This is then being uh, so glucose is converted to glucose 6-phosphate uh, which requires a breakdown of ATP so that you will have glucose 6-phosphate. Enzymes, 
could either be hexokinase, which is found in the extrahepatic tissue, and glucokinase, which is only found in the liver. Both of these enzymes are subject to regulatory mechanisms. We will talk about that later. Then your glucose 6-phosphate is isomerized to fructose 6-phosphate by an enzyme, uh, your, the enzyme that converts your glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate, which is your phosphoglucose isomerase, because they are isomers. <clears throat> then that fructose 6-phosphate is phosphorylated again. So there's another phosphate to be added. And this is through the enzyme phosphofructokinase 1 phosphofructokinase 1 because there is another phosphofructokinase 2 no? so phosphofructokinase 1 is in the glycolytic pathway all right mm -hmm. so additional of a phosphate this time the phosphate is attached to carbon 1 so fructose now has two phosphate, one in carbon uh, one and the other in carbon six. So you call it fructose one six uh, diphosphate or fructose one six biphosphate. Okay. This is the first, or you would say, the rate limiting uh, reaction rate limiting reaction, which is catalyzed by your phosphofructokinase 1. Okay, this fructose 1,6 diphosphate or base phosphate will now be split into two so that it is split in the middle so that each three carbon molecule or triose has a phosphate. So they are known as triose phosphates. Okay? It is split in the middle, so there are only three carbons each. Okay. <clears throat> so they are triose phosphates, and what are those triose phosphates? Glyceraldehyde, three phosphate, and the other one is dihydroxyacetone. However, these two are convertible to each other. But most of the time, the dihydroxyacetone is converted to glycerol dihydrophosphate. Now the enzyme that splits it is known as aldolase. Now the conversion of dihydroxyacetone phosphate to glycerol dihydrophosphate is an isomerase again, triose phosphate isomerase. Okay. So the net result of this reaction you know, uh, two moles two moles two molecules of triose phosphate. Okay. So we will follow glycerol dihydrophosphate. And this glycerol dihydrophosphate is oxidized by NAD and the enzyme is glycerol dihydrophosphate dehydrogenase and you know that your NAD as the acceptor of hydrogen becomes NADH plus H it goes to the electron transport chain to produce more ATP okay so remember that the two triose phosphate are convertible to each other. 
and I have said, most of the time it is the dihydroxyacetone phosphate becoming glycerol dihydrophosphate. So, and then the glucose is split into two triose phosphates, which becomes glycerol dihydrophosphate. You get it? Okay. So we will now look at our So here is the pathway. Oh, it's a different pathway. And I mean different presentation. So this one, this is the new presentation. Okay, you have here two sources, glucose, which comes from the diet into the blood, no? and into the cell, okay? Or coming from glycogen, glycogen stored in the liver and in the muscle, it is degraded to form glucose 1-phosphate, okay? And then this is converted to glucose 6-phosphate. So it is just a matter of uh, repositioning the phosphate from glucose one phosphate from glycogen, it transfer it to the number six carbon, okay? This is the number six carbon here and becomes now glucose six phosphate. And the enzyme that usually does that is a mutase, okay? All right, now here we are here. So we have here, glucose, exokinase, so if this is exokinase, oh, this is not uh, delivered. This is in the other tissues. If this is glucokinase, this, this is in the liver. But nevertheless, this is still similar, no? Similar in the liver and in the muscles or other tissues. Okay, then glucose 6-phosphate is isomerized by an isomerase, phosphoglucose exose isomerase. So you have now fructose 6-phosphate. Glucose and fructose are isomers. Then this is being phosphorylated by a phosphofructokinase and you will have now fructose 1,6 by phosphate, okay? This is a reverse reaction going at reversible, no? Reverse reaction. Actually, uh, you have three irreversible reactions here. One in here, one in here, and one in here. Oh. All right. So this is now split into two by an aldolase. One is dihydroxyacetone phosphate. The other one is glycerol dihydrate phosphate. Okay. This one <coughs> we converted into glycerol dihydrate phosphate through triose phosphate isomerase. So you have here glycerol dihydrate phosphate. So actually, there will be two of these that will be produced from glucose. It is split. Now each one now containing a phosphate. Now, you look at this. This is carbon one. Now, then you say, how come this is carbon this is, I'm sorry, this is carbon six, this is carbon one. When it is uh, your fructose six phosphate, see, where is the double bond? There. All right. Uh, 
Okay. So actually, you will have two of this that will go to the next uh, reactions. So how many reactions do you have here? One, two, three, four, five. The first five reactions is to produce sumuka. Will produce uh, glycerol dehydrate phosphate. Now the next reactions, another set, one, two, three, four, five enzymes. You convert glycerol dehydrate phosphate now to pyruvate. <laughs> so here is the first oxidation by a dehydrogenase in AD accepting the hydrogen from glycerol dehydrate phosphate to produce biphosphoglyceric acid. Okay, so this NADH, if it is aerobic, this goes to the electron transport chain. Okay, now we continue by phosphoglyceric acid. This by phosphoglyceric acid uh, is a high energy compound, which is more than seven kilocalories. Still remember? Seven kilocalories. So in the presence of ADP, there you are, that high energy phosphate can be added to ADP to become ATP. So you form an ATP already not in the electron transport chain, but within the cycle or in the, within the pathway. We call this substrate level phosphorylation. In the same way that we have substrate level phosphorylation and the citric acid cycle at the point of succinyl CoA, remember? No? Okay. So there you are, you form one ATP here. All right, this continue. Then that uh, phosphate from here in three phosphoglyceric acid or glycerate is transferred to the second carbon through this mutase. Okay, phosphoglycerin mutase. After that, you have two phosphoglyceric acid. This is now dehydrated by an enzyme edulase and you create phosphoenol pyruvate, another compound that is of high energy, phosphoenol pyruvate. So that in the presence of ADP, that high energy phosphate here will be transferred to ADP to become ATP. So you form one, two ATPs, substrate level phosphorylation. Okay? Now, since there are two glycerol dehyde three phosphate, two of these going this way, then you will have one and two. So two, two plus two, that becomes four, correct? Four, all right, four. However, you have invested one ATP here and one ATP here in your reaction. So four minus two, you will only have two in an aerobic condition. If this NADH will not go into the electron transport chain. You get me? If in, in a condition that is aerobic, there is oxygen, this goes to it, 
to your electron transport chain would use more ATPs additional of this substrate level phosphorylation. So you will have more of ATPs when it is aerobic. When the NADH goes to the electron transport chain. But in the absence of oxygen, and that is anaerobic, this NADH is, oxid is uh, oxidized by giving the hydrogen to pyruvate. And pyruvate becomes lactic acid. And as a result, you'll have an NAD again, so you can have a reaction. But oh, this one... The NADH. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. This is. This illustration is found in our 31st edition. The older edition is this one. But this is still the same. Okay? Let's, let's look at this. We have glucose. Is it coming from coming from the blood. Absorbed glucose from intestine goes to the blood and through the cells. And so it is phosphorylated either by hexokinase or glucokinase. And you have glucose 6-phosphate. Here, this is glycogen from the liver or from the muscle. Breakdown of glycogen, you have glucose 1-phosphate becomes now uh, glucose 6-phosphate. Oh, the transfer of this phosphate to number 6 carbon. And then it becomes uh, fructose 6-phosphate by your enzyme isomerase, phosphoglucose isomerase. So you have 6 uh, fructose 6-phosphate and then further phosphorylation, ATP becomes ADP, and adding one phosphate to carbon one. This is carbon six, this is carbon one. So you have now two phosphates. And then we split this in the middle here. Split this by an enzyme known as aldolase. So you have dihydroxyacetone phosphate, and the other one, glycerol dihydrophosphate. However, these two are, as I've said, convertible to each other. But most of the time, this dihydroxyacetone phosphate becomes glycerol dihydrophosphate. Okay? Then when you have glycerol dihydrophosphate, this is, this is now oxidized by your enzyme glycerol dehydrophosphate dehydrogenase, removing two hydrogen and giving it to NAD to become NADH. And we know when this is formed as NADH, it goes into your respiratory chain to form ATPs. Okay, did you get it? Now, this is only available when there is plenty of oxygen, or meaning you have aerated. Huh? However, in anaerobic conditions, this NADH cannot go this way because there's no oxygen. So this goes giving off the hydrogen to the product. And what is the product? Pyruvate and becomes lactate. And you 
are going to have your reduced NAD, NADH plus it become NAD again, and it goes back to this reaction so that you will have this reaction. Then you have, now this uh, enzyme does not only oxidize, but also adds a phosphate there. So that the product now becomes biphosphoglycerate. One three biphosphoglycerate. It is, is a high energy compound. A high energy compound. This phosphate now has a high energy. So that in the presence of NDP, no, it becomes ATP. So that phosphate it's here already now in your ATP, and you have phosphoglyceric acid, 3 phosphoglycerate, and this is transferred. This phosphate is transferred to number 2 carbon through a mutase. This is here, and you have now 2 phosphoglyceric acid, which is now dehydrated by an enolase, you have where water is removed. So the enzyme is enolase, okay? And you have now phosphoenol pyruvate, all right. This is a high energy compound in the presence of ADP. The phosphate there is transferred to ADP to become ATP, and you have here pyruvate. Now pyruvate, an enol form, is very unstable and is continuously becomes keto form of pyruvate because this is more stable than the enol form. Okay, so this is the pyruvate now. All right, you look at this, there's a bar, no? and there is a bar. That means that this is inhibited by iodoacetate. Iodoacetate. This reaction here. Okay, you are not taking iodoacetate. No, so you don't have to worry about that. However, this one you are taking this. And what is this? What is that compound? Sorry, can you not see it? Oh, fluoride. Where do you have fluoride? Every day you're using it. Toothpaste. Your toothpaste. 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 Susan, toothpaste. And you're brushing your teeth, you think that that will not go into your system. You should remember, nurses, that there are drugs that are absorbed in the buccal mucosa. No? Diba? You just place it under your tongue and the drug is absorbed. No? So, every day you are using it for rides. The absorption might be very, very slow, but still, there is absorption of fluorides. So what happens? Then, this is inhibited. Huh? Okay, so you know now why some uh, alternative medicine people uh, would say do not use toothpaste with fluoride. Make your own toothpaste. And how can you make your own toothpaste? When there were no toothpaste before, we were brushing our teeth with salt. And one of the best salt is sodium bicarbonate. And what is sodium bicarbonate? Baking soda. This is very common. No? 
You baking soda, you add it to your uh, bread to, to, to make your bread rice, diba? No? So baking soda. The best way to do it. Now, of course, the absorption is very low. But then it accumulates. How many years? How old are you now? How old are you now? So many years you have been absorbing that fluoride. Okay? All right. Let's continue. All right, and erythrocytes, the first site, oh, 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 come. Why did this jump? In erythrocytes, <clears throat> the first site of ATP formation and glycolysis may be bypassed. May be bypassed. Because this pathway is, is going to form a compound which is very, very important for hemoglobin. And that is 2,3 by phosphoglyceric acid. And if you remember, this binds to hemoglobin decreasing its affinity for oxygen, so making oxygen more readily available to the tissues. Uh, you can go back to chapter six of your hemoglobin. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at the illustration. Oh, here you are. So, remember? Glycerol dehydrate phosphate, 1 3 by phosphoglyceric acid, 3 3 phosphoglyceric acid, then down to pyruvate. Diba? Now, this one, as I said, ATP formation, substrate level phosphorylation, this is bypass. Your 1 3 by phosphoglyceric glycerate no, is acted upon by a mutase. You know, an enzyme, you still remember when we're talking about enzyme, mutase is an enzyme that just rearranges the molecule, rearrange the atoms in the molecule. Now, in this way, this biphosphoglyceric acid, the two phosphates are found at carbon-1 and carbon-2. In the presence of mutase, the carbon-1 phosphate is transferred to carbon-2. See that? And this is the one that is being used. This is the one that is being used by hemoglobin. A substantial amount is being uh, formed so that your hemoglobin can function. Okay? And then this biphosphoglycerin is uh, what the, the phosphate at number two carbon is removed by a phosphatase. Phosphatase. Two, three by phosphoglycerate phosphatase. And the product is three phosphoglyceric acid. So it rejoins the glycolytic pathway to pyruvate. Did you get it? Huh? So this only happens in the red blood cell because the red blood cell uh, requires that the hemoglobin no, will give off the oxygen into the tissues. And the only way to do that is to form 
2,3 by phosphoglyceric acid so that when this binds to your hemoglobin, the affinity of your hemoglobin to oxygen becomes diminished. And so the oxygen can escape into the tissues. No? You see that? How wonderful your creator is? If this is not formed, that oxygen in hemoglobin cannot be given off to the tissues. Okay? All right. Now, where will this pyruvate go? So pyruvate, as we all know, it is in the uh, it is in the cytoplasm. This is cytoplasmic. I mean the glycolytic pathway is cytoplasmic, and that pyruvate has to be. Uh, that pyruvate has to be converted to acetyl CoA. Its conversion cannot be done in the cytoplasm because there is no enzyme that acts on it. That enzyme is only found inside the mitochondrion. So that pyruvate has to enter the mitochondrion. And the pyruvate dehydrogenase. So once the pyruvate enters the mitochondrion, pyruvate dehydrogenase inside the mitochondrion now acts on pyruvate to transform it now into acetyl-CoA. There you are. So I mean, this pyruvate dehydrogenase is a complex. So remember, thiamine for diphosphate or pyrophosphate? No? Okay. It is hydroxyethyl thiamine diphosphate. All right. Here is another one, lipoamide. No? Here is another uh, from riboflavin. Okay. This is lipoic acid. Okay. Uh, and this is your coenzyme A. It's several enzymes are involved. And this is together a complex known as pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Using several uh, what you call coenzymes. No? TPP, thiamine pyrophosphate or thiamine diphosphate. Then you have the lipoic acid, lipoamide. No? And then you have your coenzyme A. Then you have your flavin adenine dinucleotide. And then you have your NADPA, NADS. So these are your coenzymes, all coming from the vitamin B complex family. Okay. So, where will this acetyl CoA go? Huh? So, we start, we said pyruvate gets inside the mitochondrion into the matrix and then acted upon by this pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and you produce acetyl-CoA. So where will this acetyl-CoA go? Hala! Why nakatingog? Kung saan man hindi niya sa kuwan? Sa mitokunreal matrix. Kung saan man yung acetyl-CoA. So what are we going to do with this? Alaka. ATP ba ito ba? Nakarimta na ang citric acid cycle. Maukanisang straight. 
This is the substrate of your citric acid cycle. And where is the citric acid cycle located? Mitochondria. In the mitochondria, in the matrix. This happens inside the mitochondria. And the product as they go away goes directly into the citric acid cycle. This is the substrate for your citric acid cycle. To be able to produce three NADH plus H, one FADH2, and one ATP for every molecule of acetyl-CoA. Right? Now let's not forget what we have learned. No? All right. This is the pyruvate dehydrogenase. This is very nice. You have your pyruvate. Okay. And it becomes acetyl-CoA through your enzyme PDH, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Okay. Look at this. What is going to inhibit this enzyme? You look for negative dione. Now, nah. nah, you have there an arrow which is wavy arrow. So, if you have plenty of acetyl CoA already formed, that can inhibit your PDH. Or, if there's plenty of NADH that will be formed, then that is inhibited. Okay? Now this one is for the activation of your PDH. Oh. You have several here. Look at this. So, this is activation by adding a phosphate or removing a phosphate. So an active PDH, PDHA, no, active diphosphoenzyme, no, inactive PDH, it B, PDHA, PDHB, inactive, okay? All right. Now, in the end result of this would be that there will be more of uh, NADH, okay? And if you have more of NADH, you will have a high ATP. So, end result would be a high ATP can also inhibit, no? High ATP. Add it, that becomes inactive. No? Now, this is because of your kinase. So what does a kinase do? A kinase puts a phosphate. So what is the source? ATP. And it becomes ADP. The phosphate is added here. So you have the phosphate here. So it becomes inactive. This only occurs when you have plenty of this already. You have only AMP. This will activate your AMP. Will activate it. Because ATP has three phosphate. Your AMP has only one phosphate. Meaning you have already a very low energy level when you have plenty of AMP. But you have plenty of ATP, you have a high. You call it a high charged cell, just like your cell phone when it is fully charged, high charged cell. Oh, it's uh, very similar. Uh, cell, cell phone. Mm -hmm. Most of them cells. 
We call it also high charge cells when you have plenty of ATP. Okay, so all just have to remember is that your PDH or pyruvate dehydrogenase complex can be inhibited by its own product, acetyl-CoA, and plenty of NADH. Because you know that when you have plenty of acetyl-CoA, you will form more of this. And if you have more of this, it goes into the, into the electron transport chain, it will produce more ATP. Niba? All right. Clinical aspects. Arsenate and mercuric ions react with uh, its, its groups of lipoic acid. Mercury. We know that mercury is poisonous. But there was a time when we were using mercury as treatment for wounds. Ever heard of mercrochrome? Wala na? Wala mo ka hinom daw mana? Mercrochrome? For wounds? Now we don't use it anymore because mercury is really a poison. So we use mercurochrome before because it kills bacteria, but it also kills us slowly. Okay. So arsenate, arsenite, and mercuric ions react with the SH groups of lipoic acid. Oh, what amino acid contains this? Cysteine. Cysteine. Remember, remember we said in the, cat, in the catalytic site of an enzyme, you are sure to have a cysteine residue because of the SH group, which participates in the catalysis. Huh? All right, so there you are. Lipoic acid is the one that is uh, being affected by presence of arsenide and mercuric ions. Now let's go to alcohol. Alcohol affects thiamine. Thiamine deficiency, because every time you drink alcohol, thiamine says, you just say goodbye to your thiamine, it will go out with your urine. Okay? And you know that thiamine pyrophosphate is very, very important in the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. Okay. Now, patients with inherited pyruvate dehydrogenase deficiency could be a defect and one more component of the enzyme complex also present lactic acidosis. Why? Because the pyruvate uh, will be already inside your mitochondrion and cannot be converted to acetyl CoA. So the lactic acid from the cytosol has no more place to go. So it is just being reduced in the cytoplasm to become lactic acid. So you will have lactic acidosis. Every time you have a glucose load, see that? because of the dependence of the brain on glucose as fuel, this metabolic effects commonly cause neurological disturbance, lactic acidosis. 
Now, inherited aldolase. Where is this aldolase? In your in your glycolytic pathway. What is its action? It splits. It splits your glucose into two triosphosphate. Huh? Aldolase. So inherited aldolase and pyruvate kinase deficiency in RBC cause hemolytic anemia. Cause hemolytic anemia. And then deficient uh, or let's say fatigue when you have muscle phosphofructokinase deficiency. If you are on a high carbohydrate diet. Manung naluya maku, ikaon mutakog dagan. So this is the one. Mamma's Okay, let's continue. Tissues that function under hypoxic conditions produce lactic acid. Okay. Glycolysis is regulated at three steps. The three steps are the three reactions which is irreversible and the first irreversible is catalyzed by either uh, hexokinase and glucokinase 
The second is phosphofructokinase. And the third is pyruvate kinase. So all are enzymes that has to do with addition of a phosphate. Okay. So let's look at the first, first one. So it says here, uh, how come? Okay, three irreversible steps. Either exokinase and glucokinase, phosphofructokinase and pyruvate kinase. No? Now, before we go to the it says blood carries glucose into the cells where it is transported across cell membrane uh, using carrier molecule, molecules or transport molecules. The above process is facilitated by insulin in adipose tissue and muscle tissue. The transport is not facilitated by insulin in RBC, intestinal mucosa, brain and liver. Okay, uh, you know this already, glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm. It produces some energy converts glucose into three carbon compounds, which then enters the mitochondrion. Glucokinase is a liver enzyme specific for glucose, while exokinase is found in every cell and catalyzes other exoses. Exoses are manos, uh, galactose, uh, fructose, no? so exokinase. And then we have three irreversible reactions. This one are your exokinase, glucokinase, that's the first step. Depends on you are in the liver, glucokinase, other tissues, exokinase. And then phosphofructokinase, and then pyruvate kinase. Okay. Let's talk about the regulatory enzymes. Enzymes, <clears throat> glucokinase. So it is emphasized again, it's a liver enzyme, which is specific for glucose. Catalyzes glucose phosphorylation. Insulin facilitates its action and is irreversible. Insulin. Meaning, glucokinase comes out in the presence of insulin. It is a high KM, meaning low affinity for glucose and it is a high Vmax. Meaning, what does this mean? Low affinity? Okay, higher concentration of glucose before glucokinase reacts. And this is well placed in the liver because the liver is the first recipient of all absorbed materials or nutrients coming from the intestine. So you have a glucose surge, goes directly to the liver. Okay, so my battery is low, with a minute. Ah. 
There you are. Okay. So it's primary activity is to handle postprandial glucose surge. Huh? Now the other one is exokine is found in every cell. No? Other than the RBC. No? Less specific catalyzes other exoses, banos, fructose, glucose, galactose, exoses. Inhibited by its own product, glucose 6-phosphate. This one is not inhibited by its own product. This one is inhibited by its own product. It has a low KM, meaning high affinity. However, low Vmax. So, in order that it will have a high Vmax, huh, the products glucose 6-phosphate must be removed, meaning it will be acted upon right away by succeeding uh, enzymes in the pathway in order that you'll have a high Vmax. Okay. Hmm. And the other one is phosphofructokinase. This is a rate limiting enzyme. Its action is stimulated by an increase of AMP and a high concentration of fructose to 6 biphosphate. Where did it?
Excuse me. According to Doc Monsanto, uh, magpadayon na na tomorrow kay may din niya problema. And it's either his laptop or the internet.